Hi, I'm Ilan Goldstein and you're watching the Scrum Shortcut series. In this video, we will be focusing on understanding relative estimation. I seriously cannot tell you how many hours of my life that I'm never getting back that were wasted in long-winded estimation sessions, trying to break down nebulous requirements into tiny detailed tasks on very long and very stripy Gantt charts. Now there was one thing worse than this, and that was having to redo these plans a few days later and a few days after that when either scope changed or impediments came up or a bit of both. It wasn't long before I realized that the only good to come out of this situation was that we now had some interesting looking stripy wallpaper to decorate the office with. And thus began my quest to find a more effective approach to help conquer the dark art of estimation. After much searching, I stumbled across what I consider to be the most effective technique for estimating emergent requirements, relative estimation. The elegant simplicity of this new approach finally convinced me that there was in fact some light at the end of the long dark estimation tunnel. Before jumping into the ins and outs of relative estimation, Let's go right back to basics and consider why estimation is so hard and painful, especially in our software world. First, we humans are not naturally great estimators. We tend to be either optimists or pessimists, and very rarely realists. I don't even need to back this assertion up with statistics because I am confident that anyone watching this video will agree. In addition, especially in the world of software, there are numerous unknowns. Technology constantly changes and requirements are emergent. There are many moving parts, as well as intricate dependencies between tasks and between people. And that's not even throwing in external environmental factors. So why bother estimating? If our estimates carry such a significant chance of being inaccurate, then why bother estimating at all? Well, I believe that even if our estimates aren't always correct, there are still very important reasons to estimate. And I'm going to talk about two of them here. The first reason is to help us make trade-off decisions. For example, let's say that I were to ask a couple living in San Francisco whether they would prefer a vacation to Australia or a vacation to Mexico. Which one would they choose? Sure, they might have a preference for one or the other, but two other big factors come into play, time and budget. While they might prefer a trip to Australia, let's say, yeah, I'm a little biased, of course, they might not have enough accrued leave to justify the long trip or enough budget. So how do they calculate whether they can afford to take this particular trip? Well, they simply estimate how long the trip might take and how much the trip might cost. The same principle applies to requirements that make up the wish list for our software products. The second reason is to help set goals. If you're anything like me, when you set a deadline for yourself, you do everything in your power to make sure you hit it. Sure, there will be times when your estimates are way off, and it shouldn't necessitate unsustainable heroics, but the act of estimating and setting targets can certainly help you to maintain focus and maximize results. Relative estimation is applied at a product backlog level rather than at a sprint backlog level. Sprint backlog items can be estimated in traditional time units, such as hours or half day blocks, primarily because the period of time being estimated for is a single sprint, which of course is a matter of days rather than months. On the other hand, the product backlog may collectively represent many months of work, making time-based estimation very long and laborious. Relative estimation applies the principle that comparing is much quicker and more accurate than deconstructing. That is, instead of trying to break down a requirement into constituent tasks and estimating these tasks, teams compare the relative effort of completing a new requirement to the relative effort of a previously estimated requirement. I'll use an analogy to demonstrate what I mean. Let's say we have four buildings. Three of them are modern, while the other is older and somewhat decrepit. They are all different sizes. We are asked to estimate 
how long it will take us in total to walk to the top floor of all the buildings using the stairs. Having never completed an exercise of this magnitude before, we have some unknowns to consider. For example, we are not sure how physically fit we are or what type of obstacles we might need to negotiate in the stairwells. So what do we do? Well, we could take the time to count every floor of every building and then estimate how long it might take us to go up the counted flights of stairs despite not knowing our fitness or the state of the stairwells. This estimate not only will take considerable time but will also be terribly inaccurate if our assumptions are way off the mark. Let's explore another option. First, let's classify the buildings into what we'll call effort classes with the smallest building considered a 10 point class. The choice of 10 is arbitrary. It could have been 100, 1000 or any number for that matter. You'll soon see why it makes no difference. We take a look at building two and we think it looks about three times the size of our 10 point building. Therefore, we classify it as a 30 point class building. Our third building, the older one, is somewhere in the middle. So we would typically call it a 20 pointer but because of its aging state, there may be more risks and impediments getting up the stairwell. So we take these factors into account and give it a point value of 25. Our final massive building is about twice the size of our second building, the 30 pointer. So it becomes a 60 point class building. Note that these points are simply relative markers to help us compare. The numbers do not relate to a specific unit of size or time. They are just classification markers. This little exercise allows us to quickly estimate the effort of our four climbs, not in absolute terms, but in relative terms. This information forms the first piece of the puzzle. We might now have an idea of the relative effort of climbing one building compared to another, but we still need to work out an estimate for the duration of the overall exercise. So what next? Well, how about we first invest a little time to actually test our fitness? Let's time box this experiment to 10 minutes, which will now form our nominated sprint duration. And let's see how far we manage to get. So to the first building stairwell we go, and after 10 minutes, we find ourselves halfway up building one, the 10 point building. Now with this information, we can work out what our velocity is, or in other words, the amount of work in points that we are able to achieve within our 10 minute sprint. Based on the fact that we climbed halfway up the 10 point building, we can say that our velocity is five points per sprint, or more simply put, five points but we need to know how long it will take us to reach the top of all four buildings, I hear you say. Well, how about some extrapolation? Let's start by totaling the amount of work to do by adding up the relative sizes of the buildings. 10 plus 30 plus 25 plus 60 equals 125 points. We then take our velocity, remember it was five points, and using some simple math, we divide the total 125 points by our five point velocity to give us 25 sprints. We know that each sprint is worth 10 minutes, so we have 250 minutes so far. We can then add another 50 minutes, 20% of our estimated time, for some extra buffer, for catching our breath and for elevator rides back down. And voila, we can give a rough estimate of 300 minutes or five hours to complete our exercise. And that's it for understanding relative estimation. I'll see you in the next video for another Scrum Shortcut.